Welcome to Office 2010 video project number 16. Hey, we're still stu studying Word. This is our last video for Word, and we have to download some files. Now, you can either click on the link below the video, or if you're in the class, just go through our course management system to the Word. And then we're in Chapter 3. <coughs> Excuse me. We need to download two start files for, for our video project 16. Boomerangs are easy to throw. Start file, so I'm going to click it, and do we click open or save? We always click save. That gives us power. That means we put it on our computer, and we could do whatever we want with it. That name is fine. That location is not fine, so I'm going to navigate wrong drive. Navigate to my Lexar, Highline, Winter, or whatever quarter. Business 216 class notes. I'm still studying Word, so I'm going to save it. Where do you want to save it? What do you want to call it? And the extension is fine. Click Save. I'm not going to open. I'm going to click Close, and I'm going to immediately click here because we just, well, we'll click Save. And because we just saved it, broop, the location is fine. The name is fine. Click Save. Close. Now we go over to, I'm going to go ahead and close this. Go over to Windows Explorer. And when I'm um, sorting up at the top by clicking in Windows Explorer on the right. And uh, the one I want is Video Project 16. Um, and we're going to start with Table of Content Styles Start File. So I'm going to double click this and open it using Windows Explorer now. This video is all about styles, right here. Heading 1, Heading 2. Now, if I click More, we talked about this earlier. Uh, I don't see the uh, Heading 2 here, and I'm going to need it. I'm going to click Escape. Right down here, I'm going to click this and show all of the styles. If I don't see what I want, I'm going to come down here to Options. This is the Styles Task pane. Click Options. And in current document, no, I want all styles. And then click OK. All right now I can come down to, uh, no, I got all my headings. Now we're not there yet. The point is we're going to see how to do heading one and heading, use heading one and heading two styles to do two really cool tricks. First one is table of contents, and the second one will be creating an automatic PowerPoint. Now here is an example. You download this. Here's the introduction and then some text. There is um, and the next section in the book and some text, the next section, text, the next section. This is actually from a book I wrote four or five years ago. And all we want to do is we want to create an automatic table of contents that tells us this section, this section, all the section, what page it is in the book. So we're going to first have to utilize Heading 1, Heading 2. Now for us, we're just going to use Heading 1. If you had a subsection, you could use Heading 2. But all this whole trick comes down to anything that we apply Heading 1 to, when we click the Create Automatic Table of Contents, the table of content will look through the entire uh, file. Anytime it sees Heading 1, it will create an entry in the table of contents. Now I'm going to highlight this and then this also. Earlier in this class, we studied exactly how to do that, and the key you have to hold is what? Control. So I click on the first one, hold Control, click on the second one. Now I'm going to let go because I'm going to use my mouse to roll. And you remember, if you're holding Control and rolling, it zooms in. So I'm going to let go of Control and scroll down. I see the next one, so before I click, I'm going to hold Control and click. Now I let go of the Control. Roll down. You can also, if you like to hold control the whole time, right, you can just use the uh, scroll bar. So I'm still holding control and then I click here. Now this is just a short example. Um, obviously if you had a research paper or book or something or whatever file, um, you'd have a lot more pages. We only have three. But all we have to do now is boop, click Heading 1. Now I don't like the way that looks so I'm going to add my formatting back. We saw you, you could actually right click modify this um, and it, that will change every time you use it in this file it would up it would change it but I'm just gonna quickly add some bold and go to uh, 24 that's it All right, so that's the that's the style I want now we come to the top 
And all it is is we go to References and No Way, Table of Contents. I can create use the drop drop down. Now there are some built-in table of contents you can see. Uh, you can also come down to uh, more uh, from contents on Office. I'm just going to use this one right here. Click and just like that. Now this is, as we've talked about a few times, this is called a field. There's, there's code behind the scene that if you hit Alt F9 you can see that's the code. Alt F9 is the toggle to see the code. Be sure to Alt F9 so you can see the result of that. But now this is dynamic. So now if we go and come to the end and um, We're going to change this rows, columns, cells, and ranges. So right, if you had a book and it's you're editing it, editing, editing it, and whatnot. Actually, if you're writing a book, as I find out, you're probably not going to use Word. But nevertheless, now let's come up here. We've changed it. Right click. R right click, and sure enough, update field. When I click update field, I'm going to say entire table. It says page numbers only. I'm going to say entire table, and sure enough, oh, it changed. Let's do one other test. See how cool this is. I'm going to come to here to the end, and how do I send this to the next page? You can see I have some footers down here, page 303. I but I want to send this to the next page and see if the table contents will update and say that this is really on page 4. So I put my cursor right there. By the way, that little symbol right there, if you turn off your non-printing characters either there or Control shift 8 that is a non-printing character that says there's a style here. All right, so how do I send it to the next page? Hold Control and tap Enter. That puts a page break. Now this should be on the fourth page, which it is. Control Home to jump to the top, and I'm going to come in right. Oh, there's an update here too. Update entire table. So now we update it. So that's trick number one. And actually, in Word, there's just a lot of tricks, and uh, they uh, use a lot of the tricks depends on whether you use heading one or heading two. So really, heading one, heading two are styles, but they're really a trigger to tell whatever feature you're using that you want to take advantage of that feature. In this case, we used Heading 1 to tell this feature to enter something into the table of contents. Now I'm going to, I haven't saved this, I do not want that name. I'm going to hit F12 for Save As, and I'm going to change it to um, something like End. So I changed it to Video Project 16 Table of Contents Styles End File, or you can give it whatever logical name you want. There's the location, there's the uh, the name and the file type. Alright, so table of contents. I'm going to close that. The next trick is even better. <clears throat> Let's go ahead and we're going to open up this one. And here's the situation. A lot of times, well, now we haven't gotten to PowerPoint yet, but I want to show you um, how to send a Word document to PowerPoint. And the reason why this trick is so helpful is because a lot of times, you know, your boss comes in and goes, here's this Word file, I want you to create a PowerPoint from it. Or I've worked on uh, book projects where everything they wanted in the PowerPoint was already in Word, right? Because people type their ideas or the whatever in Word. So if you have a situation like that where you're your data for the PowerPoint is already in Word. This trick is awesome because you don't have to re retype it over in PowerPoint or you don't have to copy and paste, copy and paste, copy and paste, which is probably what most people do. Now I'm zooming in. These are text blocks. And in PowerPoint, you're going to have a title on your slide and then some bullets. So right here, this is a PowerPoint about how to throw boomerangs, right? So there's the title slide. Select a good boomerang, select left or right, go to a park, right? So this is going to be the title, and this is going to be bullet one, bullet two, bullet three. Well, the only thing we have to do to this is any time we add heading one, when we send it over to PowerPoint automatically, that will be the title, and heading two will be the bullet. You could actually use heading three also, which is a sub-bullet. So let's get busy. Now I'm going to immediately save as. I don't want this as a start file. I'm going to hit F12. I'm going to change this to end. If only I could type. 
Video Project 16 boomerangs are easy to throw and file and then click save. All right, so I need to do this right here. And so how do I do that? Remember, it's the control trick. Now, I know when you're first learning this control trick, it does take practice. But you can see how absolutely fast it is because we're just highlighting. We're not having to highlight each time, go up and click, highlight, click, highlight, click. So it's just a great trick um, using the control to highlight just the things we want to format. So now I'm going to click Heading 1. And actually, in this file here, I don't care what the uh, resultant style looks like, because I'm just using this Heading 1, Heading 2 as a trigger. I'm not going to use this for my presentation. I'm going to send it over to PowerPoint. So even if it came up blue like that and I didn't want it, who cares in this particular file? Now I'm going to highlight this. And one thing you want to be sure is not to highlight um, the empty paragraph marks um, because it'll add extra blank bullets. If you were to highlight this and hit Heading 1, because that paragraph, even though there's nothing there, that Heading 1 still tells PowerPoint to create a new slide with a title. So actually, that would create a blank slide. I'm going to Control-Z, which is not too big. You just delete it. All right, but I want to very carefully, and now I'm holding Control right here, and I'm going to click and drag. Control and click and drag. Now I'm going to let go because I always like to use the roller ball to, to scroll down. But again, you can use this if you want. I'm going to highlight everything except for those. I'm dragging, not getting that paragraph mark. And now this one goes to the next page, so I'm going to have to be sure and go and not get to the next one. And now we just hit Heading 2. Now I'm going to Control S. Now I want to show you two ways. Now in earlier versions, that is, 2003 and earlier versions, they're actually under the file menu. There was a send to PowerPoint. Ooh, I missed one. Look at that. So now I'm going to have to come up here and hit Heading 2. But in this version, they actually didn't add it anywhere in the ribbons. Now we talked about earlier in this class how to modify the quat, and that's a perfect example of when you want to add a button to the quat. I'm going to show you two ways, though. I'm going to hit Control S right here. You can actually, after you save this, you can go to PowerPoint and open this Word document, and PowerPoint will interpret it correctly. But I never, I don't like to do it that way. I like to have a button just from Word, and then boom, it just creates it automatically. But we need to e edit this quat. So I'm going to right-click, Customize, Access Toolbar. This is just as we did in earlier in an earlier video. <coughs> Quick Access Toolbar. The big key is you got to click not popular, but all. And what's so nice about this all is you can hunt through, and we saw earlier in an earlier video that things like the five point starts is command not in ribbon. So uh, anything you, that's not in a ribbon, no problem. You add it to the quat. Now I'm going to, I need to get to, and you actually have to know what the name of the original feature was in earlier versions, and it was send to PowerPoint. So I have to go down to the S's. With this selected, I'm going to hit S key. And that just jumps to the S's. Now I've got to go to the S E send. Not yet, not yet. There's lots of them. There it is. Send to Microsoft PowerPoint. And then I'm going to click Add right there and click OK. So I've modified this. Now I have this. You ready? It, this is going to be a title bullet, title bullet. I'm going to click this, and just like that, it opens up PowerPoint, and there is your PowerPoint presentation. It's definitely one of my more favorite uh, word tricks. I have had to create a lot of PowerPoints from data already in uh, Word, and it's just, I love that trick. Now, we're going to talk about PowerPoints uh, later. Uh, and we'll do all the formatting, but let me just do two things here. I actually want this as a title slide. So on the home ribbon in PowerPoint, I'm going to go to layout and say title. You can see it changes it. And I'm going to do one other thing, go to design. And I'm just going to click on one. And immediately all of the uh, PowerPoints get the same uh, design. Now I'm going to save this. You notice it, it created a new file, so I'm going to hit F12 or Control S. They're both the same, and I'm going to save this. So 
save it to my class notes for I'm going to save it to Word because I'm still talking about Word not PowerPoint our actual next video we'll start talking about PowerPoint and let's lo learn lots of fun things with that alright um, I'm going to close this and I am <coughs> going to close this and I do want to show you the other way to do this save the reason why is like for, for example in uh, some systems you are not allowed to edit like in some of our computer labs here or maybe at your work you actually can't, you're not allowed to to change this so I'm going to show you the other method now I'm going to save this this is the end file I'm going to save now I'm going to open up PowerPoint and come up here double click in Windows Explorer so what I want to open up is this boomerang and I'm going to click this to sort it I clicked it twice there it is end right there okay no problem I just wanted to make sure it was there I'm gonna open up PowerPoint notice I don't see it down here uh, start programs Microsoft Office and then PowerPoint 2010 now we can go to open just plain old open Control O. I should have. Uh, Control O is open, and I'm just going to navigate. And once I find that Word document, now there's a trick, so we'll look at it. But here, let's go navigate to our correct folder, 216 Class Notes and Word. Notice I see that, but not the Word document. Now you have to come over here. This is the type. And instead of looking for a PowerPoint, remember we talked about this earlier in the class, open and save as are always filters depending on what type of file it is, but no way. You can select all files and you can see everything. And this is important because PowerPoint, this is an example of your the ability to open a Word document. Also in Excel, you can do the same thing if you have data saved in a Word document. All right, now I've got to find it here scroll down here here it is I can't quite see it so I'm gonna double click this and expand and there it is alright so you ready I'm gonna double click it just takes a second and sure enough that's a second method of going from a Word document with heading one and heading two styles and automatically create a PowerPoint presentation remember the the reason that this trick is so important is because often the text for your PowerPoint is already in a Word document. Uh, in our next video, we'll start talking about PowerPoint. And if you don't have your data in Word, of course, you just open up PowerPoint and start creating from scratch. And there's some great tricks over in PowerPoint. All right, see you next video.